this book was horrible. Absolutely horrible, and yet I couldn't turn away. Not in a good way. Why? I still don't understand. You might want to grab your tea today. <laughs> Let's get cozy. <laughs> Okay, so what book am I talking about? <laughs> this is my first book review slash rant. I am talking about Death's Daughter by Amber Benson. I listened to it on audio. I got it out from the library and I actually tried to DNF it multiple times. <laughs> I returned it back to the library and I couldn't stop thinking about this story. I just, something in me needed to know how it ended. And so I checked it back out and I finally finished listening to it, but listening to it was painful. I don't think I've ever rolled my eyes so many times <laughs> listening to a book. So many times. So where do we start? Let's start with what was the main cause of my eye rolls. The main character, Calliope Reaper Jones. Okay, actually rewind. Let's go back to Amber Benson. Amber Benson's the author, and her name might sound familiar to you if you are a fan of Buffy. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Amber Benson played Tara, which was Willow's love interest for, I think, three seasons, so she's got a huge fan base, and I think a lot of people had really high hopes for this book. It is an older book. It came out in 2009, and it just fell so flat. She narrated the book herself, and she certainly does a great job narrating the voice of Calliope, who I found to be very annoying. <laughs> and her voice seemed to go really well with that. But her accents for the other characters, oh my god, they're so bad. They're so bad. <laughs> she does Indian accents. I think Jarvis, he's like this butler guy, is supposed to be like British or English, but it like mixes with her Indian accent and it's just all over the place. All over the place. Okay, I'm all over the place trying to describe this book to you. <laughs> Why did I need to know what happened? Okay, what's the synopsis of this book? This is definitely going to have a lot of spoilers in it. There's no way around it. It's going to help me describe it to you. This book is about Calliope Reaper Jones, who is Death's daughter. And she doesn't want to be Death's daughter. She doesn't want to have anything to do with the supernatural world. Her and her whole family are immortal, and she's actually given herself a forgetting spell. So she lives in the real world and doesn't even remember that this is her family, that her father is Death, until her father is kidnapped. Her father and her older sister are kidnapped, and the whole like executive of Death Inc., all the executives are kidnapped. And now, due to her birthright, she is death except not she has to go through like this series of quests to finish to like be able to accept her birthright of death so sounds amazing right the synopsis the plot it is so good and it's what kept calling me back in i needed to know what happened i needed to know even though like three quarters of the way through i knew who it was going to be who had done it all and who was like the one who kidnapped everything, I knew. And I still wanted to hear how it ended. I couldn't turn away from it. And yet, I couldn't listen to it at the same time. I would be driving in the car, listening to this audiobook, and like, ah, just wanting to turn it off. I could only handle it for a little bits at a time. So Calliope, our main character, bless her heart. <laughs> Let me just preface this by saying I'm a very non-judgmental person. <laughs> In real life, I usually like to give people the benefit of the doubt. I'm very kind-hearted and sweet. But in books, I give myself a little bit more leeway, and I did not like Calliope Reaper Jones. I found her to be very annoying. She grated on my nerves so much. The way that she's written, she over-explained everything. She would like come to these big conclusions and then forget she'd come to these conclusions and come to the conclusions three or four more times. Ugh, it was so rough to listen to. She's very whiny. She's very pouty. She speaks like a 12-year-old. She says jerkoid all the time, like that jerkoid. But it was weird because she's also supposed to be like this badass, strong, death's daughter like going through all of these quests and achieving all of these things and she's just kind of like 
annoyed by it all, but not in a cute, fun way, just in an annoying way. She's also hyper-sexualized, like a bit of a perv. It, it just grossed me out the way that she described every single other male character that she wasn't related to in a way of like being super attracted to them or only thinking about having sex with them. Meanwhile, it didn't make sense. It didn't progress the story forward. I don't mind a little bit of like sexualization in stories. I'm, I'm reading a series right now, The Succubus Harem, that I'm loving, and it's about a succubus, so there's lots of this sexual tension involved, but in this story, it was done in a super creepy, pervy way, and I have an example for you. So this is in chapter 28, and she enters into like this dream world a couple of times, and so this is kind of describing her entering this dream world, and when she enters it, she's in somebody else's body at first, and the second time she goes into this world, she ends up in her own body, but at first she's in this other character named Indra's body, who is a male. I looked in the mirror and once again I was Indra, all tall and lithe and with a well-muscled body and a regal face and extremely large. Hmm. I wondered if I'd get a chance to give the package a test drive this time. Gross. Do you want to know why this is gross? Because she's literally going into like this hell dream world to go into a castle made of dead bodies. There is flesh everywhere decaying. She's in, going to face like this dangerous monster. Her family is missing and she's thinking about touching the member of this character's body that she's in Ugh, it just was weird it didn't make any sense i didn't like it and it was like every other comment was something hyper sexualized like this and i did not enjoy it then my other big problem is that we have this secondary character named daniel and he's de uh, he's the devil's protege and he's got the other claim to the title of death so it's kind of calliope and daniel going for the title of death well the devil can impersonate daniel and so it takes calliope a long time to realize that it's the devil impersonating daniel even though it's very clear to all of us very early on that that's what's happening when she kisses Daniel when he's the devil, there's a disgusting taste in his mouth. When she kisses Daniel and he's not the devil, it's great and lovely. No connections are made on her part. So eventually, when she does realize it, she's like, oh, that makes so much sense, right? She realizes it a few times, and then towards the end of the book, he pretends to be going against her so he can, like, get this evil guy's approval and then get close enough to hurt the evil guy. Demon, whatever he is. Okay, so that all happens, and he, like, pretends to kiss Calliope, then punches her in the stomach and says, I want nothing to do with you, right? And she's, like, shocked. Oh, my God. Daniel, oh my gosh, and she's so shocked, right? And then he goes up to this bad demon, Ritra, and says, I'm on your side. I can become deaf for you. And so he gets close enough, he shakes his hand, and then he like punches him or, or something happens and he can help kind of like take out this demon. And she's like, oh, he was really on my side all along, right? So we have that whole moment of realization. And then in the epilogue of the book, Daniel, like, apparently died at, towards the end, but I'm pretty sure he's going to come back in book two. Yes, there are more books, and yes, I'm thinking about reading them, but why? Why torture myself? I don't know. <laughs> Have you had this experience? <laughs> So anyways, we think he's dead. We assume he's dead. I thought he'd come back in the epilogue. He didn't, but her younger sister, who is 16 and acts much more mature than she does, comes in and says, um, didn't you realize that Daniel didn't want to hurt you? He never wanted to punch you in the stomach. Yes, we already all learned that. We've already all acknowledged that. And the younger sister goes, Daniel could have used the cup. There's like this magical cup that gives you immortality. Daniel you could have used the cup himself, but he used it to help us find you. And Calliope goes, why did I never realize that before? You did. Twelve times! Twelve times you realized that before! What? What? It's bonkers. It's so bonkers. None of it made any sense. 
I hated it the whole way through, but I couldn't stop thinking about it. I wanted to know what happened. I wanted to know how it all came together. And it was pretty satisfying at the end as far as the plot line goes. So I haven't had this experience too often. There's only one other series I can think of where this happened, where I loved the storyline, I needed to find out what happened, and I hated the writing. I did not enjoy the characters, and that was absolutely what happened in this book. Don't read it. Please don't put yourself through it. Don't read it. Don't read it. Run away. But I'm hooked. <laughs> Run away. So the second one is called Cat's Claw, which is originally why I got the series because I'm doing it. My next diamond painting has a bunch of adorable, like fantasy kind of cats on it. So I wanted a book that was cat themed. So I thought, oh, I'll listen to this one first and then I'll listen to the cat themed one. And here I am. Will I listen to Cat's Claw? No. Probably. Probably. I got it from Cloud Library through the library, so I'm not spending any money on it, but I wonder if there'll be any character development in Calliope. I'm thinking probably not. She seems a little bit more grounded towards the end of the book, but boy, this book had a lot of potential. So those are my thoughts. Caw Pile, it ended up being a two lowest book of the year. Let me give you the breakdown on that. I gave it, so for Caw Pile, the individual ratings are out of 10, and then it's all um, summed up into a five-star rating process. So characters, I gave it a two out of 10. Did not enjoy any of the characters. Uh, the only one who I kind of liked was Kali, the goddess Kali of death, who they also made kind of seem like a teenage girl, which I was like, this is the goddess of death, people. <laughs> But okay, she was like the only one I kind of enjoyed, and Jarvis was kind of fun. He's like the butler to death. Um, atmosphere, I gave it a 4 out of 10. Like, there were some interesting things. There were some places that were fun to hang out. I thought it was kind of neat how there were portals in between hell and different places, but that was about it. Writing style, 3. Like, we explained things so many times. It made the reader feel like we were not able to put any puzzle pieces together ourselves and it had to be really over explained i don't even know why i got a three i guess because i kept coming back plot i gave a seven because i couldn't stop thinking about it what happened what was going to happen what were all these pieces that came together same with intrigue seven out of ten because i couldn't stop thinking about it, it definitely kept me guessing even when i knew i knew who it was going to be i still had to make sure i knew you know what i mean <laughs> Logic, 2 out of 10. Like, ugh, did it, why? Why was she like this? Enjoyment, 4 out of 10. Uh, the moments where, she, where Calliope wasn't hypersexualized and wasn't being whiny, which was a small percentage of the book, were super enjoyable. And I wanted those to last longer. And then a comment would come out and I'd be like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> so that all broke down to 4.14, which gave it 2 stars. I did try to DNF it unsuccessfully. Okay, so before we hop off of here, I thought it would be fun to go through a couple of the Goodreads reviews, like best Goodread reviews and worst Goodread reviews, and see, re react to that. Okay, so on Goodreads, it has 3.22, which isn't the worst for Goodreads. I mean, it's definitely lower for Goodreads, but um, not the worst I've ever seen. Let's be kind and sort it by five star reviews and just see who gave it five stars. What? <laughs> Ugh, okay, so the first five star review says, loving this book so far, it's witty, entertaining, and the writing flows effortlessly. Maybe, maybe if I read a physical copy of the book instead of listen to it with my own narration maybe she would have been a little less annoying i wonder if that impacted the read at all okay the other five star says 
Okay, I can't review this book without mentioning how cool I think the author is. Years ago, I was a Buffy the Vampire Slayer addict. I've seen every episode of that show an obscene number of times. When I found out that Amber Benson, aka Willow's witchy girlfriend, was an author, I was ecstatic. I immediately googled to my heart's content to find out all I could and decided right away I needed to review one of her books. The book is fast-paced with non-stop action and mystery and one hell of an unexpected turn. I don't want to say too much because I want to avoid giving spoilers. Check out Death's Daughter. You won't be disappointed. I feel like this happens. For fans who are super fans of the author, you definitely give more benefit of the doubt, right? You're like, oh, a, a bias. Like, if I have a friend who writes a book, I'm definitely going to be a little bit biased, right? Like, I think I am, probably. So you're like, maybe a little bit biased? Let's see this five star. There are a lot of great moments throughout the story. I really enjoyed reading how Callie works on her first task, only to realize that it would have been much easier if she'd spoken up at the beginning. There's also a lot to be said for an author who can directly bring so many religious mythological beliefs into one book and not step on a reader's toes with them. Amber succeeded in that, even with the cameos that the Judeo-Christian Judeo God and Satan make. I actually enjoyed reading their short parts within the story. Yeah, definitely. I thought it was really neat how different mythological creatures came in and how they were kind of all part of death and God, and that was neat. Definitely. I'll definitely give you that. As someone who knows a lot about various cultures and their beliefs in death and the afterlife, I really enjoy getting to see someone who didn't know about those legends actually experience them. Overall, this is a great and very fun read. Definitely not to be missed. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> okay, let's go to a couple one-star reviews. Isn't this the cool thing about reading, though? We can all interact with the same book and all have different feelings and connections to it. Okay. One star. Oh, how I wanted to love this book. I love Amber Benson, and I've read some of her work on comics, so I figured even with the kind of lame premise, <laughs> this book would turn out okay. But unfortunately, it's pretty terrible. I actually loved the premise. I would read a book with that same premise. Um... <laughs> For starters, there is exactly one mildly likable character in a cast of dozens, and it isn't the heroine. The heroine mostly sits around and whines and waits for other people to save her. Yes. Also, she's pretty much obsessively attracted to anything with a p as long as he's not shorter than her. God forbid. God forbid he's shorter than her, right? Good point, Heather. Good point. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Okay, so this is a good example of maybe how reading it in a physical copy wouldn't have made much of a difference. <laughs> Free One Star says, wow, so the first chapter has revealed Calliope to be a forgetful space case, a bit spastic, super overreactive, and a somewhat snobby weightist. Great. And good grief, the italics. I mean, really? Does there have to be an italicized word in every single paragraph? I get it. You are trying to emphasize, but when you emphasize every single sentence, it makes everything seem unimportant and annoying. A bunch of other reviews say that once you get past the first few chapters, it's throw and it's worth it. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> she updates page 50, and then she just says, I quit. I just cannot finish this book. Callie is one of the worst characters I've ever had to suffer through, and she's just not worth it to force myself to finish this book. Six chapters was more than enough. She's whiny, annoying, selfish, spineless, helpless, speaks like an eighth grader. Did she really have to pull the not card and call someone a jerkazoid? Yeah, she does multiple, multiple, multiple times. Drop name brands like a fashion Nazi and is just overall self-centered. Yeah. So that was Death's Daughter. What do you think? Should I read Cat's Claw? Should I put myself through it? <gasps> Maybe I do a reading vlog so you guys can see how many times I roll my eyes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. Oh, thank you for hanging out for my book review slash rant. I hope you guys have a beautiful day. I would love to hear your experiences in the comments below if you've read anything that made you feel this way. And hopefully I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye guys. Thank you.